Marhaba everyone, welcome back to my channel and if you're new, hi, my name is Senna. Sorry if there's a bit of um, background noise, I did open the screen door because every time I'm working and I'm wearing, you know, I'm obviously covered for the video, I just feel like it gets really stuffy in here really fast. But, um, anywho, today's video, hmm. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm getting or some sort of consequence for talking about the topics that I've been talking about um, because my views have been so bad and it's unlike my channel even though like, you know I don't have a lot of subscribers or a lot of like followers or anything like that but normally my vlogs get around like 60-ish views yesterday's got when i checked it this morning it was at nine <laughs> and i'm like you're trying to censor little old me you really think i can make that much of a difference but yeah so i've actually been seeing a lot of people that they've been using you know instead of writing down the entire word they'll be putting like g or they'll be putting in like a watermelon um and that sucks it just sucks how bad they want to shut us down from talking about what's right and the truth so I guess I'm gonna have to be ultra cautious. I originally was trying to be cautious, you know, by not making my thumbnail super, you know, political, but kind of like still low key. But then my videos do have like just, it's just straight up <laughs> news and straight up facts and stuff. Even in my titles, I don't think I necessarily put anything about it in there. I, I don't remember. So I was trying to be kind of sneaky about it, but. I guess now we need to go full on sneaky and see how that goes. Today's plan, really, um, I got some more orders, so I'm trying to fulfill them as fast as I can. My machine has been giving me a lot of um, problems. I don't know why my thread keeps getting snatched. So every time that happens, I have to stop it and I have to, you know, kind of like Put it back kind of like set it backwards to start embroidering where the thread stopped and then i have to re-thread it and so that just adds on more time in the embroidery journey so i get less sweatshirts done in the same amount of time if my machine was actually functioning properly so i was gonna do that my plan was to do that and to get started on this book i actually already started it i'm on page three well four <laughs> um and the very first you know how like some authors they say they have like this book is written for this or like you know like to my beautiful like a dedication Ugh. so it says i dedicate this book to my grandchildren Tariq, Idris, and Noor, all born in the 21st century, who will hopefully see the end of this hundred years war. But yeah, that's pretty much my day. I said I was going to take you guys along on my day to day, and this is pretty much what I do for the majority of my week. I'm just working on my orders, packing them, and that takes me some time, you know, because my machine's not technically an industrial level machine so i'm really pushing it <laughs> to its limit i mean the thing is like i know obviously like i could make vlogs about like going out places you know obviously i see people do their vlogs you know going out and getting coffee or thrifting or taking you along on like their errands and stuff like that but again the point of these videos was to be very intentional with the subject of the content and i just don't know how it would make sense to me to like incorporate those things in these vlogs 
without feeling like the whole point is moot. Rather than just talking about like what's happening on the news and what's um, going on, I feel like a big part of some people's misunderstanding or maybe some people's misconceptions about a certain group of people leads them to believe certain things you know because of what they're normally used to seeing on the news and the propaganda and things like that so i just think that educating people about the history the symbols the culture the food you know showing that side of things will help with you know some people seeing them as like like oh wow they're humans like you know we shouldn't fear them like why 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 did i think they were so scary to begin with you know what i mean and i just think a big part of it comes from like a lack of education and a lack of getting the proper news and having proper resources to be able to tell you you know what's real and what's doesn't make sense you know machine the thread just breaks off so then I have to figure out exactly where it stopped and then I have to re-thread the needle I think I've already done this about five times for this one design it's not always very fun and that happens. So I came in here because I wanted to read Najee some of these things because he's a very politically interested individual. <laughs> I don't know what to call him. Okay. The author says, starting after World War I, the dismantling of an indigenous Palestinian society was set in motion by the large-scale immigration of European Jewish settlers supported by the newly established British Mandate authorities who helped them build the autonomous structure of a Zionist parastate. And then it says, the indigenous population was further diminished by the crushing uh, repression of the great 1936-39 to 39 Arab revolt against British rule, during which 14 to 17 percent of the adult male population was killed, wounded, imprisoned, or exiled. Yeah. As the British employed 100,000 troops and air power to master Palestinian resistance. Yeah, okay. Meanwhile, a massive wave of Jewish immigration as a result of persecution by the Nazi regime in Germany raised the Jewish population in Palestine from just 18 percent of the total in 1932 to over 31 percent in 1939. This provided the demographic critical mass and military manpower that were necessary for the ethnic cleansing of Palestine in 1948. The expulsion then of over half the Arab population of the country first by Zionist militias and then by the Israeli army completed the military and political triumph of Zionism. And then it says, such, such radical social engineering at the expense of the indigenous population is the way of all colonial settler movements. In Palestine, it was a necessary precondition for transforming most of an overwhelmingly Arab country into a predominantly Jewish state. As this book will argue, the modern history of Palestine can be understood in these terms. As a colonial war waged against the indigenous population by a variety of parties to force them to, relin to relinquish their homeland to another people against their will. And then it says, characteristically European colonizers seeking to supplant or dominate indigenous peoples, whether in the Americas, Africa, Asia, or Australasia, or in Ireland, have always described them in pejorative terms. They also always claim that they will leave the native population better off as a result of their rule. The civilizing and progressive nature of their colonial projects serve to justify whatever enormities are perpetrated against the indigenous people to fulfill their objective. Yeah, sound familiar? America? 
Sheesh, man. Have you ever stopped to think that there was stability, more stability in the Middle East before the U.S. decided to indesh away everyone? Dude, get out of everyone's countries, man. Like, get out of here. Literally, that's what they say. They're trying to strengthen and they want to they wanna help. And all. Get out of here. Stop. No one's buying it anymore. Like, was this what this was for? To trigger Maggie's <laughs> like, I'm about to. I'm about to go off. <laughs> I feel like you might like also reading this book because it's a very kind of like a history book but also calling certain things out so far yeah i'm down to read it that sounds like something i would want to read this is just the introduction oh, really yeah this is just oh, wow. the introduction that has all this information so far uh they did it to the native americans they did it to Africans, they did it. Yeah, notice who's standing to, with the Palestinians. To right now. Arabs, mm -hmm. to Middle Easterners, yeah, man. Hmm. You know this one woman? Mm. She was she was the ambassador, the Zionist ambassador in Britain, right? And they were interviewing her on TV, and the woman was like, "What are your thoughts on the humanitarian crisis right now in Gaza?" And then she said, "She said there there isn't one." And then she was like, well, how can you say that? She's like, because there isn't. And then she was like, uh, the, what did she say? She said, this is all Hamas's fault. And I'm just like, bro, people, people are getting so tired of you guys using that. People are thinking, hmm, 9-11? Hmm, always saying Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda. For every single time you killed someone innocent, like, that, that's that's your heda? That's your fallback? Get out of here, man. Literally, they were. this guy was getting called out so hard. Like, I kind of want you to watch some of this stuff. They're not long clips, but this one, it's in Norway, I think. And he's talking to this guy. And he's a very well, like, he's been on so many different news outlets. And it's like, they, it's, it's, they I clearly rehearsed these answers, right? Because they don't answer the question. You said, yes or no, do the Palestinians have the right to self-determine and have their own state? And then he'd be like, he would say, Israel is all for the Palestinians having powers to govern themselves, but not powers to hurt us. And then the guy would be like, he kind of just look at him. He's like, it was a yes or no question, right? And he'd be <laughs> like, but what it sounds like is that you want things done on your terms. No, we just don't want them to hurt us. Like, and he's like, yeah, okay, you're sitting here bombing and killing a bunch of these people. We tell them to get out. We tell them this. He's like, yes, but then you tell them to go somewhere, and then they'll bomb them there. Like, what, what's what's going on? Well, you see, it's Hamas. They, they um, he'll be like, they, they, they embed themselves within the civilian population, and this, this, and that. And, and the guy's just looking at it. It's so funny, because the guy's not buying it, right? He's just listening to me. He looks Arab, too. He's Norwegian, I'm pretty sure, but he looks Arab. And he's sitting there talking and talking, and the guy's just looking at him, and he's like, and he's very calm, he doesn't call, but he'll just be like, he's like, you guys call yourself the only democratic state in the entire, in the entire Arab, uh, in the Middle East. And yet, what, what happened to what you guys call the freedom of the press? He's like, we do let the press inside, CNN, BBC, he's like, yes, but only on your terms, only when you allow it, and only when they uh, show what you wanted to film, and this, this, and that. How is that freedom of the press, right? I mean, Dude. two months of bombings, they still haven't gotten the hummus yet. <laughs> and the U.S. are like the world's biggest gaslighters. And he literally asked him, like, how many people have you killed so far? Like, how many Hamas militants have you killed? Thousands. Oh, do you have proof of that? Well, that's just our estimation. Well, then how do you know that you've killed thousands of them? It, it, the guy, like, they're like literally contradicting themselves. Like, what do you mean? That's our estimation. But you're... But you know you killed thousands. Yes. Well, where are they? Like, well, well, how do you identify them? If you're bombing everyone, how do you know it's them? Yeah. Right? And the guy will just be like, you be like, well, that's just our estimate, this, this, and that. Okay. So I thought you were filming. <laughs> <laughs> you, you heard it here, folks. <laughs> anyway, I feel like when you see so many people that are pro, um, getting reprimanded or even like calling certain individuals out, you know, for things that just don't logically make sense it's kind of it just makes you think why are you trying so hard to silence certain people if you genuinely believe that you're not doing anything wrong oh no boo i'm gonna have to redo this sweatshirt i just noticed look at that you see what happens when the thread keeps getting messed up, ugh.
it's not a big deal I'll just have to redo it oh i'm just saying people that are being silenced people that are you know getting things like removed or taken away or suspended or whatever the case is it's because they're scared sorry i don't mean to like point the scissors at you like that but it's because they're scared they're scared of the truth they're scared of people putting two and two together they're banking on people's ignorance <clears throat> excuse me and i feel like if that's not enough to make you feel some type of way about it like the fact that the system that's supposed to be put in place to help us is almost banking on the ignorance of other people i'm only on page 10 and that's because that's just my life as a business owner as a mother as a human with responsibilities sometimes it's hard especially during the day to like actually sit down and just like read through something but so far it's like mm. anyway hopefully tomorrow we'll start the vlog bright and early and have like a f few more things in there thank you for being here and I'll see you hopefully tomorrow. <laughs> Bye.